Scene and sequel are one of the most commonly taught writing concepts and something I've had trouble making work in real life. Is it me or is there something wrong with the concept? I'm Shanna Swinson and we're here to talk about writing. So scene and sequel is one of the core writing principles. Uh, you'll find it in Jack Bickham's book, Scene and Structure, that's part of the writing, Writer's Digest series. And it's in Techniques of the Selling Writer by Dwight Swain, one of the Bibles of fiction writing. And it's in any number of other writing books and workshops. So the basic idea is that a novel is made up of a series of scenes and sequels. The scene is the action part. The character has a goal, does something to try to achieve that goal, but runs into conflict or opposition, so he has to try multiple approaches. The scene ends in some kind of disaster in which the character either definitively fails to reach the goal so that trying another approach won't work, or he achieves it but in a way that makes things work for him. Either way, it throws the character off balance so that he has to regroup. Then the sequel is the reaction part of the sequence. The character responds to the disaster, has a dilemma about what to do next, then makes a decision about his next step, which becomes the goal for the next scene. When I read about this or hear someone speak about it in a workshop, it makes so much sense. Following this kind of structure ensures that there's conflict and that the action drives from one scene to another. And then when I try to apply it to my own work, that's the part my editor or agent says needs to be cut. All that trying multiple approaches and ending in failure means I have a bunch of scenes that keep the story from progressing. Because at some point, the characters have to give what they want in order for the story to go anywhere. While you wouldn't really want the detective in a mystery story to find the definitive clue to solve the case in the first scene of the investigation, the story won't go anywhere if his goal in the scene is to find a clue and he doesn't find anything. So my favorite story structure example, the original Star Wars. We've got one of these situations. Luke and Obi-Wan go into the cantina with the goal of finding a starship captain who'll take them to Alderaan. They do have a bit of conflict. There's the bar fight and Han Solo drives a hard bargain. But the first pilot they talk to agrees to take them. If this had followed these rules, they would have failed to achieve their goal. And it would have ruined the movie because they'd have never left Tatooine. It would have been a movie about them trying and failing to find transportation while the Death Star was out there blowing up planets. So. Are all these writing gurus wrong, or have I been misinterpreting it? Dwight Swain does refer to incidents and happenings, which are story fragments that aren't technically scenes because they don't have a goal or conflict, but I don't think this applies to this example because the characters do have a goal, and the scene is critical to the plot. It's not just a filler moment to flesh out the characters and relationships. I finally figured out that maybe the problem is the terminology. I've been thinking about a scene in theater terms. So in a play, the scene is the part that takes place in a particular location and time. And at the end of the scene, the stage goes dark and people wearing black run out and rearrange things to create a new setting or show that time has passed and then the lights come back on and the next scene begins. In a movie, it's similar. You may get a quick blink to black as a transition, or in Star Wars, one of those wipe transitions. In a book, that's where you have a blank line or one of those little graphic items. But I think in story structure terms, what they're calling a scene isn't the same thing. Um, you could have multiple theater type scenes in a story scene, or you could have multiple story scenes in a theater type scene. It just all depends on the goal and how it plays out. Maybe we need a new term for this to make it less confusing, but I haven't able been, to, been able to think of anything. So, looking at Star Wars again, I think what I need to do is broaden the scope and back up a bit. So maybe the same goal is actually comes after Luke's previous goal to just drop Obi-Wan off and go back home, ends in the disaster of his uncle and aunt being killed, so he has no home to go back to. So then he tells Obi-Wan he'll go with him and bring the droids to Alderaan. And that's his new goal. Finding transportation is just one of the things they have to deal with along the way, along with avoiding Imperial entanglements. The disaster comes when they reach where Alderaan should be, and it's not there, which is definitely a definitive failure to reach their goal. There is not going to be any backtracking and trying a new approach. Then they get taken aboard the spaceship whose plans they were taking to Alderaan, so it's an even bigger disaster. 
and in response to that they have to come up with a new plan to escape from the Death Star. Now this scene has encompassed multiple theater type scenes. We've got the arrival in Mos Eisley, the, these aren't the droids you're looking for, but uh, the scene in the cantina, the arrival at the docking bay, the what a piece of junk, uh, the escape from Tatooine, the lightsaber training and the space chess on board the ship, and then the arrival of the ruins of Alderaan. And all of these bits are braided around the scenes taking place on the Death Star. Now we still don't have our heroes trying multiple approaches before they fail. They fly to Alderaan and it's not there, period. So that may only apply to certain kinds of stories. Uh, going back to my hypothetical mystery detective story, the scene goal might be to find that suspect A is the killer. So the detective might look at clue one, then clue two, interview a witness, all without getting anything definitive, but then the last approach they try leaves them with proof that suspect A couldn't have been the killer which is a disaster, and he now needs to find a new line of investigation to pursue. But realizing that I was taking things far too literally and narrowly helped me to finally make some sense out of this concept. I can take a bigger picture view of my singles, and then I can have proper disasters without bringing the story to a screeching halt, and without a lot of extraneous fillers in the attempt to give myself uh, any kind of disasters for my characters. I've also seen a story structure outline that has this built in. So instead of looking in terms of scene and sequels, there's a part of the outline for goal A, then the drive to achieve goal A, then failure of goal A, and regrouping followed by a new goal. Now in the smaller theater type scenes, um, you don't have to keep the characters from getting what they want. I like to think of that in terms of what's going to get them closer to having to deal with the main story problem. You want them to fail at anything that would make life easier, but succeed at things that are going to get them in deeper trouble. So Luke and Obi-Wan succeed in getting transportation because that will take them closer to bigger trouble. If they fail, they're stuck on Tatooine away from all the problems. But if they fail to reach Alderaan because it would be too easy to just bring the droids straight to where they were told to take them. Now a good test would be whether or not achieving the goal would end the story. If achieving the goal ends the story, they have to fail. If failing ends the story, they have to succeed. Luke not getting passage to Alderaan would have ended the story. Luke successfully driving, delivering the droids to Alderaan would have ended the story or sent it in a different direction. In a mystery story, the detective finding evidence that tells him exactly who the killer is would end the story, so that has to happen late in the story. But the detective searching for evidence and finding nothing at all might also end the story. Ultimately, I think it's a mistake to get any tied down to any one bit of writing theory. The scene and sequel format is a good tool to use when you're trying to figure out what should happen in a scene or when you're trying to analyze a scene that isn't working. But if you're too rigid about it, it will cycle your story. Some point, you just have to write and let the story play out. Uh, I find my best success once I just am into the story and get going without analyzing it too much. And I will then analyze it more in revisions. So good luck with that and happy writing.